I create redware using the tools and techniques practiced by the Pennsylvania German potters from roughly 1600 to 1850. They dug their own red earthenware clay and obtained white earthenware from perhaps New Jersey or imported it from Europe. They created their wares using the slab rolling technique or threw on a potter's wheel. Much of their functional ware was undecorated. Their commemorative and fancy pieces were scraffitoed. If they wished to decorate their functional wear, they would use a slip trailing method. The Pennsylvania German potters created their slabbed work using a rolling pin, a batter, and a mold. To create the sgraffito decorations, they needed slip, a brush to apply it, and various tools that would scratch the slip, including a sharpened stick, a wire loop tool, or any other implements that would scratch. Their slip trailed pieces were created using a slip trailer with one or more quills as the straws. Additional tools used were a circle cutter, a tool to do their trimming, and a cogga wheel to decorate the edges of their pieces. To begin, use a lump of clay large enough for your finished piece. Pound it down with your rolling pin, batter, or your hands. I use dowels to control the thickness of my clay, rolling it until the rolling pin touches the dowels. You may use a circle cutter if it's the exact size of your mold, or use a template. In this case, this template is a slightly larger than my mold, which will allow me to do some trimming. I use drywall as my wear board, placing it underneath the rolled slab of clay, which will enable me to flip everything over, including the mold, at one time. Place the mold upside down on your slabbed piece. Pull your canvas, or in this case I use heavy duty interfacing to avoid the woven marks that the canvas leaves. Flip the whole thing over in one smooth movement. Place your mold on a banding wheel. This will allow you to turn the piece without touching anything else. Smooth it down. Because I had just rolled this piece of clay, I am not picking it up with my fingers to avoid stretching it. Using a Yumi or other trimming tool, trim your piece to the mold. Allow the piece to dry to leather hard before applying the slip. I'm using a natural hair bristle brush in this case. I apply a few thin coats of slip over the piece. You may use a brush or you may use the pour on pour off method. Once the slip's been applied, I use my cogga wheel to create the decorative edge on the piece. My pattern has already been traced to a piece of tracing paper. I will use a stylus to follow my lines and it leaves a slight indentation in the slip. The Pennsylvania German potters could have used this technique. They could have used a piece of charcoal to draw directly onto the slip or they may have used powdered charcoal in a little bag, a piece of paper with tiny holes punctured in it. Applying the bag of charcoal on top of the paper, it would have left little tiny dots of charcoal on the slip below. The Pennsylvania German potters would then have to connect the dots. When the tracing is finished, remove the paper and begin to scraffito. Using any tool that scratches, a wire loop tool, a sharpened stick, a scratch nib on a calligraphy style pen. Scratch the white slip away to reveal the red underneath it. Keeping your crumbs away from your hands and from underneath the piece. I brush my crumbs to the side.
Using a charcoal pencil, you can draw directly on the slip. This will fire away in the kiln. You can also scraffito freehand. There's no reason to have to trace your design onto the plate before you begin. The design is finished, but I'd like to add a little line around the edge of the plate. Using my ring finger, I lay that against the edge of the plate. I keep my tool in one position and turn the plate slowly on the banding wheel. I will dry this piece upside down to avoid warping in the kiln. Slip our pieces are begun the same way. A slab of clay is rolled out to the desired thickness. Once again I'm using a template. This will be cut to slightly larger than the mold itself. Trim the edges. and get ready to do the slip trailing. The Pennsylvania German potters use the slip trailer of a thrown cup or pinch pot with one or more quills inserted into it as their straws. I use a plastic container. This happens to be a Rubbermaid container. One or more holes puncture towards the top of the container small drank straws were inserted into the holes and to avoid leakage I have glued around the inside and the outside of the straws. To keep the straws in place so that they don't wiggle back and forth I've applied tape to the tops of them to keep them at their desired distance apart. Pennsylvania German potters have used quills, just the ends of large bird feathers, turkeys or goose. Pour your slip into the slip trailer. I have tinted this slip using a mason stain. I stir and shake frequently to avoid settling of the slip. When you're pouring your slip into your slip cup, make sure it doesn't go above the straws. Apply the lid tightly to avoid leakage. When slip trailing it's best to stand up so your body can sway from side to side. I will pour a little slip out of the slip trailer to verify that all five straws are flowing evenly. Apply the slip in the desired design across the face of the plate allow to dry until the slip is no longer tacky to the touch. My wear board is already underneath this slab. I will apply the mold to the top and flip the whole thing over. I will use the banding wheel to form the piece to the mold and trim its edge. I find using a batter on wet pieces of clay does leave marks. I prefer to only use it on drier pieces of clay. Using the trimming tool, trim the clay to the mold. When this clay piece is leather hard, I will remove it from the mold and coggle the plate's edge using my coggle wheel. I fire in an electric kiln. I bisque fire and then I apply a commercial glaze. 
I add iron oxide to the glaze to give it a richer color. The Pennsylvania German potters would have used a leaded glaze, the recipe including lead and red earthenware. They applied the glaze to the greenware piece, allowed it to dry, placed it in their wood-fired kiln, and fired to completion. They also added colors such as green with a copper oxide and a brown-black color using manganese.